Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking about my life. I can't seem to get that through to you. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm, no, not no, talking no. About, I'm not just talking about one person. I'm talking about everybody. I know you're tired. We're all tired. I'm tired of the Pilot of Baloney. I'm talking about form. I'm talking about content. I'm talking about interrelationships. I'm talking about God, the devil, hell, heaven. Do you understand? Finally! A Furby boom is possessed. It's going to end. <laughs> the heck is wrong with it? <laughs> yeah, it's like shut down malfunction. Aisha was playing with it. She was playing with it on the iPad on the Furby boom app and it started acting mental. And now look, look at it. It can't close its mouth. It's like. <laughs> It was like speaking gibberish before, like it was possessed. And now it's all... <laughs> we don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Go to sleep. No, it'll take a couple minutes to go to sleep, even if it is. Wait. Stop. His mouth closed. What? Okay. <laughs> now it seems to be normal again. Hi, uh, Freddy me here. Well, I just saw Rogue One last night. Um, I thought I would make a video before showering and dressing in proper clothes. At least I ate to make this video. Now, um, first of all, you're probably all wondering uh, what I thought of the film. I like it that I hate it because lately my trend has been I hate everything and I really don't want to come off as that and I, I don't hate everything it's just I don't want to but I will say this that right away that I thought this film was good no I actually liked it I liked the film I thought it was good I liked Rogue One I liked the Star Wars film now, if only I could say this about a Star Trek film, <laughs> maybe one day anyway, I can. Um, yeah, and also there's going to be lots of spoilers here, lots of spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled, turn us off right now in the video. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, I'm going to spoil it because, you know, I give you plenty of, plenty of warning and I can't really properly express how I feel about the film without spoiling it, so. So yeah, for those of you who don't know what Rogue One is about, which I'm sure everyone who watches my stuff does, I'll just quickly skim, reiterate it, whatever. Um, it takes place before Episode Four, the original 79 Star Wars film, Episode Four. Um, basically, it's about how, because you remember in Episode Four how it starts out, Princess Leia is in a Corellian Corvette, the ship, that's what it's called, being attacked by Star Destroyer and <clears throat> Darth Vader comes on board and it's like, give me these, give me the plans you have for the Death Star, blah blah blah. Well that's what this is about, it basically Rogue One is about how they got the plans to the Death Star, <clears throat> leading up to episode 4 when Leia's in that ship running away and R2-D2 and C-3PO have the plans, you find Luke, blah blah blah, leading up to how they got the plans, how it was all done. And I thought it was, I liked everything they did. Um, now, like, I try to find flaws, actually, because I'm thinking this can't be right. I actually really like this film. I wouldn't say it's like, film of the year, oh my god, that, yeah, but it was good. I was good. I liked it. I would see it again. Uh, I may even buy the film. Oh, you know, usually I only buy films that I, I really enjoyed. Um, is my face blurry? I hope not. If it is, I'm sorry. It's, it's in the daytime, too. I figured it wouldn't need the spotlights shining down on me and stuff. I made my monitor darker, but it looks blurry too. Whatever, as long as you can hear what I'm saying, right? Anyway. I tried to find flaws, just because that's the way I am. I'm, I'm anal particular about this sort of stuff. And the only flaw I found out right away, which isn't a flaw at all. I'm going to start with the flaws because I don't have that many. Um, this is going to sound stupid, but I don't know why. This is, this is how anal it can be about this sort of stuff. Remember how the stormtroopers sounded with their, like, 
in, in their helmets, like, There's one. Set for stun. Like that weird, I don't know how to explain it, I'm, I'm retarded. Do you know what's going on? Maybe it's another drill. The effect it had, like it sounded like they're talking in a walkie-talkie, but in their helmets, in episode 4. They tried to mimic that sort of in this movie, but it didn't quite sound the same, of course. It didn't sound as authentic, and that bugged me. What? That's, that's, that's all I got. And I th which I think is pretty good, if that's all that really bothered me. Uh, and Darth Vader's voice did not sound... Yeah, of course, it's James Earl Jones still, right? You are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor! I think. I think it is. Find the passengers in this vessel! I want them alive! I mean, super, super old, crunchy old man. Hey. So I'm sure his voice isn't going to sound quite the same from like 40 See. years ago. Uh, I'm surprised See. he's still alive. But anyway, yeah, so his voice, D. it sounded, at first sounded like Vader, you could tell, yeah, it doesn't e. sound at all like him. Somehow, Vader looked fatter in this yeah. film, I don't know, his neck looked fatter, maybe never properly paid e. attention to his uh, weight e. in any other film, but other than that, um, the I. CG effects, I'll say, I'll start going into the good stuff, I'll just go whatever pops in my head, so for all of you know who actually watch my videos, I'm just completely random, okay? K. So bear with me. The CG effects on the digital enhancements they did on the actors' faces was amazing, I thought. I mean, I don't watch too many movies, I and mean, maybe there's other films out there that are way better, but I thought it was amazing. Like, uh, Governor Tarkin, General Tarkin, whatever he is, he's governor in this movie. Governor Tarkin! I'm like, oh my god, it looks just like the guy! Oh. The same actor, um, I forget his name, put it here. Um, from episode 4, like, he looks the same youthful almost. You can tell, it's obviously. CG or enhanced, but still, they did a good job. It looks almost like the exact same guy. Terminator, immediately. And Leia, at the end, it was Princess Leia at the very end only. Um, I'm like, oh my god, it looks just like the same young Leia from episode 4. It's so amazing. I thought that was so cool. And I like how they didn't overdo it with, like, putting Leia. I was afraid they had to put Leia in it way too many times. I'm like, but she only had a small part, right? She only just volunteer to take the plans and get them to Yavin 4, I guess. Um, so I'm glad they didn't put her over the top, like, in the film everywhere. Because I don't think she would have been, and they didn't do that, thankfully. They had her dad in there, her, I guess, her adoptive father. Um, I forget his name, too, but he was in it. And which was fine, because he was in episode 1, 2, and 3, and now he's in this one for the final time, before he gets blown up in Alderaan, I guess. Um, and one thing, too, I... I I guess I, I'm not sure if I agreed with is that the Death Star, um, which was cool, they showed it finished being made, um, and they did a few tests. They did a few tests on, um, like, not planetary destruction tests, but like nuclear <laughs> type explosion tests. Like, they blew up uh, a city and then they blew up their own base at one point in the film. And I'm like, I thought they didn't do any tests at all until Alderaan in the movie on episode 4. I don't know, I don't read the novels, I don't read any of the, like, anything else, so maybe they did. I'm not going to complain, because I don't know. But I'm like, did they do real actual tests? But I'm cool, I'm glad they didn't. What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? Break their own story, or, um... They kept it consistent with episode four. That they, they didn't actually blow up a planet, which was good. I thought for sure, like, you might do in other films. Oh, who cares? We'll just blow up a planet and make something up as to why he said it was their first test on all around in like episode four. They didn't do that. They stuck with it. They are consistent that they did only minor tests, which were really cool, um, to see them blow up cities and whatnot. Heck, Borf. Um, I liked all the actors. I thought all the actors were really good. I don't remember any of their names, sorry. I have to watch it quite a few times before I remember that. The main, the main actress, I, I thought she was cool. Um, the, her, the, the buddy who... Um, does he rescue her? I forget. The other guy, the sniper guy. Um, the blind guy with his buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have any of these names. I have to put them on the bottom here. And their faces along with it, so you know who I'm talking about. Um, yeah, Gary. And even the pilot. Like, I liked them all. The Imperial pilot. I thought they were all good. And I liked how even the volunteers who go to get the Death Star plans, like, they're not...
just like red shirts who just died me some of them are red shirts who just died me meaninglessly and when i say red shirts i mean from like the original star trek for you those of you who don't know who red shirts are the original star trek series had often had episodes where a random nobody red shirt guy came on the mission just to die so there weren't any red shirts here too much like a lot everyone had a role to play even the most insignificant person did something significant everyone had a purpose and a meaning and i like that um, I, I never like i'm sick of seeing shows or movies where they just had useless guys who just discarded like i like the fact that everyone was important in this movie pretty much oh god i think i'm going to pop i'm so stupid everyone died no one survived i like that because to do such to complete such a feat You'd have to have a bunch of people who are willing to just throw it all away to complete this mission. That's the only way. Because it, like, it was a heavily fortified, the highest security, I guess, sort of base, right? And then they had the Death Star plans in it. So they had like a big, huge, massive shield gate that protected the entire planet. They had a bunch of Star Destroyers there. Like, to complete such a mission, you would literally have to be on terms with, okay, I'm going to most likely 99% chance die. But you know what, if it means doing the right thing and saving my people, I'll do it. And that's what they went in on with that method. Like, we're probably not going to survive this, but hell, let's do it anyway. And they all died. I thought that was, that's perfect. That's probably how it would have ended up. That they, they would have to sacrifice themselves to complete this mission. I thought that was really cool. They stuck with that. They didn't do like, oh, just in and out, no problems, because Star Wars sort of thing. They actually like, nope, no one survived. And everyone had to die to do it. I thought that was really cool. Um, even the fleet that comes in to help them, most of the ships blow up. I mean, only a few handful make out. Leia's ship, for example. Um, only one handful of ships that escaped. I thought that was cool. The only thing I didn't like, uh, another thing I didn't like, uh, not, not a big deal, um, was how Leia's ship was right in the, bat in the heat of the battle. Like, why would they bring her to that battle? She's like a VIP person. Why would she go to that battle? I thought, if anything, in episode 4, they escape from, with the plans, rendezvous with her somewhere else, pass them on, and she went on her way. I thought that would have made more sense. Maybe that's what they had in mind, but they thought, we're running out of time here, so we'll just say, ah, she was in the battle and she took off. Because it wouldn't make sense to me to bring a big VIP, big wig princess person to a huge battle like that for no reason. When I mean, they're all planning on not making it out of there alive anyway, really. Um, no, apparently she was in the fight. You don't see her fighting. What? Um, and they give the plans to her, and she takes off in a ship and runs for it. And that's where episode four starts, right? Vader jerks, goes in a Star Destroyer and chases after her. Um, it also shows Vader fighting in the film at the end, too. Like, quick, like a, a quick scene of him like massacring rebels. I thought that was really cool, how they did that. Um, at least they showed something of him in there. I, I didn't expect to show anyone, really, in this film. They even had um, Red Leader and Gold Leader from Episode 4 in this. And I think all they did for them, though, was they just took the exact scenes they were in where they were flying their own X-Wing and Y-Wings um, and just re-digitalized it to make it look like they're there in this movie. Because it looked exactly the same. Like they. Probably didn't have to do too much work for them. They just took the exact scenes from Episode Four, put them in this movie. No shit. Because again, they're just show them flying in their ships. That's all for a second. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it was really cool to see them again. And of course, you know, they survived that battle. I I got it. Thanks. Really. They didn't show Porkins though. That's <sighs> good. That's funny how too, and showed Porkins in Episode Four. This whole ship is wobbling. It's too fat to keep it up. I guess. Who knows gravity in space, but I don't know. Anyway, they didn't show Porkins. No, 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 no. Oh well. We're bigs. I can't see it. What else about the film? Yeah, so again, I didn't think of too many things that bugged me. I actually liked it because it didn't do over the top with. Remember this? Remember this guy from this movie? Remember this guy? They did some of that. I'm so stupid. Remember from episode 4 in the cantina? Who doesn't remember the cantina scene? Um, where it showed the bum mouth guy with his buddy with the one eye. And they approach Luke. And he's like, He doesn't like you. I don't like you either. That guy. He gets his, the bum man gets his arm chopped up. They're in it for a second. But the guy looks much younger. 
But of course, he has to say something similar to what he says in episode 4, just so you know it's him. He's like, why don't you watch yourself? Same voice. He didn't have to do that, but that, okay, that was kind of cool, okay. They did a f like, only a couple of those. They didn't do, like, episode 7 crazy, every little thing, remember this, remember this? Like, oh, enough, you know? And again, they didn't have the massive coincidences, like in episode 7. Like, like in Star Trek, even, that pissed me off. An example of episode 7 where they find a Millennium Falcon and it happens to work when they start it and they when they leave the planet, Han and Chewie happen to be right there waiting. What are the chances? They went they didn't know they were planning to steal the ship and leave. What are the, what are the chances they happen to be there? If it's a there weren't any, any of those massive coincidences, thank god, you know. Never heard of the Millennium Falcon. Um, so again, it, it seems like I, I can't help but feel maybe they learned from the mistakes from episode seven and kind of made up for it here, I, I somehow, you know? Maybe they actually heard the complaints of other people. And, uh, and, uh... Like some people would say this was like, not so much Star Wars, but more like a war film. No, this was a Star Wars film. I mean, just because it didn't have the main guys, Luke, Leia, and Han, and Chewie, and R2-D2 and C-3PO, they were in it for a second. Doesn't make any less a Star Wars film. There's X-Wings, there's Y-Wings, there's the medical frigates, there's the Star Destroyers, there's the Stormtroopers, there's got everything. It's a Star Wars film. Um, I guess it is more for the people who are more advanced in the Star Wars, more familiar with it, um, sort of people. Otherwise, everyone else might be like, what's going on? I don't get it. It's more of a war film for them. But no, this was a Star Wars film uh, that was really done well. Um, oh, jeez! It was amazing action, amazing scenes, amazing with the X-Wings and TIE Fighters and all that too. That was all really good. Um, I like how the blind guy... Um, what do you want? He was a Force user, but he wasn't... Like, I'm glad too that they didn't bring like, a Jedi into this. You know, because there wasn't supposed to be any left at this point, right? Vader went around the galaxy murdering them all. So I'm glad they didn't, they were so consistent that they didn't have any real Jedis in this. But they had a Force user in it. He was a guy who was preachy Force guy, everyone thought it was like mumbo jumbo, but um, he had some Force powers. But since he wasn't trained properly or anything, he only did what he could do, right? Like, he, he was blind, but he could still technically, in a way, see guys. everyone. So he was an awesome fighter. And he knew, like, there's one scene where he was going to um, hit this master switch for the comms array or whatever, and in order to get to this master switch, there's gunfire everywhere, right? And everyone else was dead. So he's like, you know what? He starts praying in a way, the force is with me, or something like that. Jesus, man. And he walks to the switch, and all the way, he, he doesn't get hit. Because he knows uh, the force guides him as to where to walk and when, so he doesn't get hit. I thought that was cool, because if he really did have the force, that sort of thing would make sense. And they didn't go over the top of it. He was a good fighter, he could see technically, even though he's blind. And he's really skilled at aiming and everything else, um, but he didn't have a lightsaber, he didn't do force push, or anything like that, you know. He was just a very basic force user type of guy in a way. I thought that was really cool how they did that too, they didn't go over the top. Swiggly, swiggly. I hope they keep on this trend of Star Wars films, that they make it consistent like this, more realistic in a sense, um, more believable I guess I should say. Not realistic what? Star Wars. <clears throat> but stick with the storyline and not like I hope episode eight isn't a big joke like seven again I watch my episode seven review um, I'm sorry about the music in that video it's over it's too loud but watch that again for my opinion on that all the things I thought they did wrong um, they didn't need to re they didn't need to rehash episode four that's what they did they didn't need to do that they didn't need the dev another Death Star planet they didn't need another Darth Vader wannabe like that was all stupid. Um, but this was good. I'm not sure what they're going to do next. I wouldn't be surprised if they do, like, the second Death Star plans. Many Bothans died to bring us this information. Bring us this information. So they're going to, what, do a whole movie with Bothans? What's a Bothan anyway? Bothans were furry politicians. Imagine a whole movie about them. I'd watch it. Star Wars. What do the Bothans care? Anyway, I don't know. So that's, I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to just quickly throw that out there, and um, hope we didn't just sit there watch my blurry face the entire time. 
And yeah, um, go see it, um, even if I spoiled it completely for you. Uh, it's still a good film worth watching. The ending I thought was really well done. Everyone died, perfect, made sense. Um, really sad, heartfelt I felt. Heartfelt I felt. Um, I didn't like, you know, wuss out and cry or nothing, but it was still really sad and heartbreaking that uh, everyone died. And uh, if I would only hope there'd be people out there like that today who would be willing to go to that distance, um, you know, to bring peace. You know, like I don't like I always imagine myself in such a situation. Would I be nearly as brave? Probably not. I feel awful. Is it, there's probably actual people like that in you know in wartime who would do that and say, you know, what, I'll kill myself if it means bringing peace to my country. Like that's that's another story though. So anyway. I'm gonna go, I guess that's it, and we have some plants versus zombies.